increased in terms of the years spent in school. Public education eventually got decentralized and essentially provided compulsory primary education for grades 1 through 8 with four years of secondary education. Alright, so the education system in Chile primarily runs around um, um, the following four um, sectors. Public education, uh, which includes municipal schools administered by municipalities throughout um, the Department of Education. Uh, private, subsidized uh, education financed by private sources um, through public funding. Um, and private education, which is only uh, financed uh, by private sources. And corporations, which includes actual vocational schools administered by firms or enterprises with fixed allocation um, of budget uh, for the state. I'm tired. Do you want to please do something? Sure. Preschool education encompasses children under the age of four years old, and only 40% of those were registered in 2008. Elementary education is eight years of mandatory education for children between 6 to 15 years old, and in 2008, enrollment was 94.3%. <coughs> Secondary education, which is mandatory for four years, is divided into two types, humanistic, scientific, and vocational. For students 14 to 17 years old, the 2008 enrollment was 80.8%. Finally, higher education targets students between the ages of 16 and 24 years old, and there are three types of institutions, universities, professional institutes, and centers for, third, for technical training, for which the enrollment was only 30%. Alright, so some of the reforms or changes that progressively happened and added on one another, beginning from 1860 all the way to 2003, one can see uh, uh, the changes and only think that education started to become a lot more important. In 1860, primary instruction started. In 1920, a law came about and primary education became mandatory for at least four years. In 1929 to 1965, primary instruction became mandatory for at least eight years. And finally, in 2003, it was declared mandatory to go through primary and secondary education over the span of 12 years. So the first wave of reform happened and the objectives were to promote greater efficiency and main interventions were decentralization, privatization, voucher system, labor deregulation, and student assessment. In higher education, the free market imposed minimum requirements for building a university, and around 80 universities were created during that period. During this period, the action of the students was limited by the repression of the dictatorship. So the second wave of reform mainly dealt with the quality and equity and a teacher statute and the greater transparency and the greater importance was given um, to the quality of education or training within um, the classroom. The third and final reform included extending the school day, redesigning the curriculum, and secondary school was upgraded and teacher professionalism um, was um, tackled. Um, in May 2006, um, a major protest um, took place and more than 600,000 um, students um, went out to protest seeking education reform. One of the demands, um, and I quote, but, uh, one of the student demands was to repeal the Constitutional Organic Law of Education together with the Green 524 published on May 11th, 1990, regulated um, student centers. Um, so what does the LOC stands for? LOC basically means it reduces the state's participation in education to a solely regulatory and protective role, while the true responsibility of education has been transferred to private and public corporations, public schools being managed by local governments. But, um, so that basically reduced uh, the participation that students, uh, parents, and non-academic employees had previously um, within these institutions. The result of these, uh, the result of this, um, um, uh, protest wasn't that really um, effective as there was a um, committee that was formed composed of about 80 members uh, and minimal uh, changes occurred and no reform of a substantial importance was put forth. Uh, the profit situation may not change. Uh, students occupied schools and took over suites um, again till an actual agreement uh, was come into play. Uh, a, a presidential council was established and uh, new measures were um, uh, implemented or tried to be implemented in order to uh, improve um, the uh, quality of education. Do, do you really talk too much? 
Research has shown that mentors have an impressive effect on teacher and student performance and teachers that take their job seriously tend to have higher scoring students. So our recommendation as a group is the following. It's simple, it's straightforward, and can have amazing results. We want to implement something called the mentor program. Basically, mentors are experienced educators that will be allocated in schools and educational institutions throughout the country. And they will be there to support teachers practically, professionally, and morally. Research has shown that the more time you allocate to reflection, the better the improvement curve will be. I hope you're okay now, Chris, because you're going to do the next part. Chris? So the way we're going to do this is we're going to increase the time available for learning. The mental program that was implemented allowed more time for reflection for the teachers that participated. Um, there were several issues that were raised with this to which we have some recommendations. The time allocated for learning should be increased. The technological infrastructure should be updated and actually implement the mentor program from which improved learning opportunities will be generated. This means that through correct mentor guidance and prolonged exposure in the field, the issue of quality will be addressed. In other words, don't expect the students to achieve higher levels of cognitive response when schools can't even provide them with proper overall learning environments, such as technological infrastructure, qualified educators, and the community of resources. In order to reach all these groups that are responsible for a reform to actually take place within a country in such a big scale, we need to involve the media, and we need to involve um, and then we're going to reach out to these people, um, the ministry officials, finance, and civil servants, university leaders, uh, teachers' unions, um, scientists, writers, artists, the general public, the Congress, the local leaders. Um, in order for us to change a problem into something that can relate to the daily life of an average citizen, um, we need to make sure that it actually reaches out and it actually finds its way um, into everybody's um, life. Um, so, I was actually. Don't you think it's time for me to get here? Because the question and answer is going to start. And I would like to invite our group up. Sure, sure. All right. Um, okay, sure. Hold on just a second. I'm going to leave the mic right here and run over the class. <laughs> References? somehow to reallocate this money and find like to, in order to find its way through education we're not we're not talking about um, really funding them as much as it would be um, some of a uh, of um, a relation between the mentor and the teacher himself teachers a lot of the times just like, uh, dr. Jen Brooks said a couple of weeks ago uh, a lot of the times they might not be um, professionals in the sense they might be um, um, graduate students, so they might be doing their other best at the same time. So offering him a mentor who would be willing to give him information or willing to be giving him um, um, substantial support that will not be um, financially, you know, um, translated into money. Uh, we don't necessarily have to have such a big issue with the money. I mean, we, we, we guess that we're not going to have such a big issue with the finances because the experience that they get out of the mentors is a lot more valuable. Than, and Chile you know, has the highest per capita income in that America. Okay. And also they get a chance like, to be employed to work for the school after they finish their program. So they have a really good opportunity to join the school and get like, a good career afterwards. Yeah. Um, I was pleased with uh, the aspect of uh, uh, the reflective part of uh, the 
teacher training that you propose as a policy recommendation for reform. Because I think uh, uh, reflection, teachers, schools that perform well is not just the amount of the quality of teachers that they have or the amount of resources that they have, but the collaboration that is the teachers that they have, with the, the collaborative school culture that exists in that institution. And when, when it comes to uh, effective training for, for, for teachers, I think it takes more than just having mentors. Because uh, uh, when we talk about like critical training group or cognitive coaching, these are some elements of effective teaching, effective training that you guys might want to have to incorporate in your policy recommendation. If you think about aspects of like these things like these, or you just focus more on like, having mentors. See, that's the thing. Um, mentors, uh, part of the job description for the mentor would be to actually allow enough reflection time at the end of every uh, particular um, period of time. So basically what you're doing is that you have somebody who is responsible for one teacher or a group of teachers situated within an educational institution. So therefore, after let's say seven or eight days, they have enough time to sit and reflect to see how those strategies that were being suggested, if they were being implemented or not, and if they were being implemented, were there any difficulties? What were the difficulties? Was it um, textbooks? Was it um, the fact that the uh, students were not responding? Was, it the, the, was there enough technology? So, so if you actually kind of break down um, and you have not kind of like educational spies, but you're having people that are in the field, they know what goes on in the classroom, but at the same time, um, they are able to report what these problems are on, let's say, um, eight days or seven days or whatever the period of time for reflection is uh, situated. So it's, it's more of like trying to tackle the problem um, in time uh, rather than you know um, solving it instantly, it's just kind of like keeping updated with the problem because you know um, a lot of the issues that we discuss for technological infrastructure, textbooks are usually you know they might be really good, but the teachers are not really qualified to use them. So we're just dealing with a lot of issues um, that could be just simply solved if somebody knows how to do it. They could just tell you how to do it, and you know it could just kind of be very very beneficial. Um, any other questions? So any other questions? Okay. Before we end, we want to thank our great group for the effort they put into all of this information. <laughs> <laughs> Before it says anything, really, though the idea seems to be very, very eccentric, this would not be able to pull this off if it wasn't for uh, Ahmed. Uh, he really, really helped me out. I mean, we spent two nights together trying to pull this together, and really, his expertise really made my life really, really easy. I think he deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Alright, let's it's see. It's great, you know. Uh, <laughs>